Hello and welcome back to Hot to the Top. Today we have got two games coming up for you. We've got Luzerne in the league and then after that we've got the Europa League second round and we're playing against Monaco. It's going to be very tough. So hello, hope you're all doing well today. I'm doing all right myself. Looking forward to these games. They're going to be big ones. Now, last episode we spoke how the top four is pretty much settled but it's a race for the top. It's going to be really tight for the rest of the season. Not so much now. First of all, we'll take you through the fixtures we've had since you were last here for the 3-1 loss to Young Boys and the 3-0 win against Basel. Now, we haven't been bad, but we've not been convincing either. We started off with a 1-1 draw with Lugano, where they scored in the 91st minute. We should have made better use of our chances in that game, but we just... We followed up, though, with a positive result. They didn't start off positive. We went 2-0 down to St. Garland, and it took a Coley hat-trick and a Neto goal towards the second half to make sure we won that one 4-2. So it was a great result to come back from 2-0 down, but we shouldn't have been 2-0 down in the first place, really. We then... Had a terrible 1-1 draw with Zurich and we were by far the better team in this game. If you look at the stats, 27 shots there, 12 shots, yet we just couldn't put it in the back of the net enough times. Only the 1-1 draw there with Gonzalo scoring a goal from a set piece there. We then had another 4-3 win over Servette. We've had three 4-3 wins over Servette now. We seem to have some massive games against them, but it seems to capture them on camera for some reason. Either way, Schneider, Coley, Illich and Smith with the goals in that one, which was quite nice to see. And then last time out, we played Sion in the Swiss Cup quarter final. We played a bit of a rotated side in this one to rest a few players for this Luzerne game of the league because the league is sort of the priority. But we still managed to win it 3-1 with Alan, Neto and Schneider getting themselves on the score sheet, which means we set up a semi-final against Young Boys, who of course we lost to in the final last season. So you look at that and think, okay, you've done pretty well. Not lost a game in there, you know, results aren't going too bad. But if we look at the the Super League table, we have actually dropped five points behind Basel. Now, obviously, they had some games in hand on us that they haven't really got away too much from us. But apart from one loss there in the Super League, they've actually played better than us, winning more of their games, which is a little bit frustrating. For the good of the entire league, though, they are doing quite well in the Europa Conference League after being knocked down after getting third in their group in the Europa League. So that's quite good to see. I want to see as many Swiss teams as far as possible in European competitions this season so we can get a better coefficient for the next few seasons. Young boys are only three points behind us, but Luzerne have dropped back a little bit. They're now five points behind us, which means they're five points behind Bar so that sort of four horse race it looked like for a little while last episode has sort of gone back down to a two maybe three horse race now the transfer window has finished and we did manage to sign a player we nearly signed three players actually two of them decided to go to other clubs instead which was a little bit annoying but we have signed for 1.2 million overpaying for him a little bit but we have signed Alexis Claude Maurice from Nice who is a winger on that left hand side to provide cover for us whilst Tim Wright is out for the next eight to ten months injured now we probably have overpaid a little bit for him as he's only two and a half star current ability 24 years old he's got some good you know determination he's got a good mentoring stats and things like that but he's not a player that i expect just to use too much uh Dajaku Koo is only slightly worse than him apparently so they'll probably play rotate a little bit in fact Dajaku's played a lot more than Maurice because he's played quite well he's had some good form Dajaku so Maurice has found it a little bit hard to get into the starting lineup recently and he's going to start on the bench today against Luzerne just because Dajaku has played relatively well in the recent few games so this is the starting lineup then for today's first game against Luzerne we've got Fructal in goal with a back line of Boone, Augusto, Gonzalo and Cruz uh, Schneider and Illich need to swap over and then they can be in that midfield partnership with Dajaku, Alex Smith and Allen as the attacking midfield trio. A few of you have told me to switch Allen's role around, and whilst I want to, I don't want to make him an attacking playmaker because Schneider does that quite well. He also does Mazala, but I feel like a Mazala is, it says here, it's a central player that likes to drift wide and operate in the half spaces, essentially a, a central winger, half winger, and I don't really feel like it's the best. If we've got wingers already, what's the point in having a half winger? So Schneider sort of has to be that attacking playmaker, which only really means that... And we can make at Smith a Trequatista or something like that, but he's just not that comfortable in that role. So I feel like we have to leave him on attacking midfield. Let me know what you do in the comment section, though. And then Coley is going to be leading the line for us because Molnar has failed to score 
for a long time, whereas Coley has picked up a few goals. He's now up to 25 goals in all competitions now, ahead of Molnar's 19, which is good to see. So he gets the nod for today's game. So jumping straight into things in this episode, is anyone else playing at the same time as us? Uh, it'd be nice if Basel were, but Basel aren't playing at the same time as us. So we can watch out for the young boys result, because that's quite important to us right now. Of course, we're playing Luzerne, who are in fourth. So we need to be getting the win here today if we want to keep mounting pressure onto Basel, who are currently top of the table. After having... I'd say two abysmal seasons the past two seasons. They came second and third, I think, but they've just not been anywhere near the title. Like, young boys have run away with it, and then it was us and young boys last season running away with it. So Basel have had a bit of a tough time not being anywhere near winning the league. So they're doing well this season, which is nice to see for a change, maybe. But it's also quite nice to see Lucerne up at the top of the table as well. I'd like to see them get a few more points, and it would be a real proper title race, but obviously they can get their points after we take three points off them. And we're going the right way about it. We have seven shots to their two shots right now. But again, very similar to other games, we either score quite a few goals but concede a few as well, or we just can't seem to get anything and we get like a 1-1 draw or a 0-0 draw and things like that. We're just... We're too inconsistent for my liking right now. And that ball forward wasn't brilliant, but their clearance also wasn't great as Alex loses possession at Alex... Uh, not Alex Smith there. Who is number 17? What's his name again? What's his name? Alan. It's not Alex Allen. That doesn't make sense, does it? I cannot remember what his first name is now. It's weird. You look at these players all... Jake Allen, isn't it? I see the J now. I know what it is. But you look at these players all season and all of a sudden their names go out of your head for some bizarre reason. Either way, we've got to half time. Very little to talk about in that first half and uh, it's nil-nil still. Come on then, lads. Let's get it sorted out in this second half. Gonzalo on the ball right now into Felipe Cruz. Felipe Cruz back to Gonzalo. Let's not lose possession of the pressure here. Good, good idea to pass it back to Fructal there. Distribute it out into the middle. That's good to see. Schneider coming forward now. Just put a little ball over the top to someone. That's what we usually do. Dajaku into Alex Smith. Back to Dajaku. They're defending really well, I've got to say, at Lucerne right now. In a real good bank of defenders there. Boone can't quite get it in. Schneider into Dajaku. Alex Smith. It's somehow, somehow kept out the back there. I think it just bounced off a few defenders and eventually stopped by the goalkeeper. They got very lucky there, I've got to say. And uh, Schneider has picked up an injury. That's not good to see. So Neto can come on for him. Hopefully it's not as bad as Tim Wright's injury. That would be dreadful if that was the case. As Cruz puts a free kick in. Gonzalo heading it over. We really need to win today's game if we want to be looking at winning the league. I mean, Coley's played terribly. So Molnar can come on instead for him. And Dajaku as well. So Claude Maurice can come on. So they're all the substitutes that we've made. Whereas Lucerne have a free kick, which is nearly put in the back of the net from a very clever free kick there. Right, we're going to go to very attacking as well. I've decided that and shout, show some passion. Come on, boys. Show some passion. Final 10 minutes now, a big 10 minutes. Very attacking. Let's get a goal in this game as Alex Smith collects the ball into Illich, who loses it. Here comes Luzerne now, coming forward. It's just unmarked. He's allowed to run through. And fortunately, Fructal denies him the chance to score. Come on, sort it out. Few more minutes to go. Luzerne have really got themselves back in this game in the second half. We've not really done much. Maybe we should have changed formation or something as again. Their number 17 coming forward, causing some issues, but still not scoring. Free kick being put into the area, and we've just about got rid of it. Only as far as their number 26, though, as he looks to try and get the ball in, but doesn't. Come on, a few more minutes now. Literally. Can I just say, push forward? Come on, five minutes of added time. Let's grab a goal. We deserve the win in today's game. Unfortunately, it's coming to Luzerne, who can't turn it in the back of a net yet. But the highlight continues. Number nine out to the number 15 in a lot of space. Who can put a ball back centrally, lads? Don't, don't you let me, don't let me down now. Gonzalo, great. Felipe Cruz, Neto, counterattack quickly. Molnar coming forward. Don't let me down, Molnar. I believe in you. You've not scored for a while. Just pass it not shoot pass it we could have won the game but no Molnar a little bit selfish there at the end it's a nil-nil draw it's not the worst result considering that Luzerne are having a very very good season but it means that we are four points behind Basel they've got a game in hand they can easily go seven points clear with not many games left this season Schneider's injury then only out for three to four weeks he will miss the game against Monaco though and be out for five to six weeks do we give him an injection to get through that let me just let me let me check this. So the quarterfinals are going to be at the start of April, which means he would recover in that time if we beat Monaco. And to beat Monaco, we have to put the best team out there. So I think it's worth giving him some injections. I never, never normally do this. But there we go. 
giving some injections to Randy Schneider so he can play the next game. Well, not now not scored in seven hours of football, which is a little bit concerning. In fact, should we have a little pep talk with him? Should we just say to him, um, warm player, criticise recent form? Let me say, you've not been scoring many recently. Um, and he says, I know I'm not doing well. I'll try hard to score goals. Okay, thank you, mate. We are going to start Coley, though, against Monaco, just because Coley is in better form, apart from last game where he got like a 6.4, which... Makes you think maybe we should start Molnar, but it's one of those things. Also, immediately regretting, immediately regretting putting Schneider on injections. I think that could have been a bad idea. We probably need him for the league games, really, don't we? Should have thought about that. As I only just realised as well, the uh, youth intake should come around here at some point, shouldn't it? I suppose we can't really miss that, can we? So we will play until the youth intake, but it means I'll probably have to play the Sion game off camera. And so here is the fixture list for the entire Euro Cup second round. Again, we are, we've got a pretty tough draw to be fair, but I think we are one of the, the, the lesser sides left in the competition. Maybe Alaska a little bit less than, I don't know. We're, we are down there though. We're not like a Man United or a, or a Porto. Monaco, how are they getting on this season? Let's have a look. They're, they're fourth in the French first division. Uh, they drew their last game against Strasbourg, but they've they've done okay in other games, haven't they, I suppose? They they are better than us, really. No real shocks, actually, in that first round. I suppose maybe Porto losing to Inter so emphatically in extra time as well might be a bit of a shock, maybe. But Moscow, Inter, Man United and Bayer Leverkusen through at the moment. Hopefully, we are going to be joining them as Dajaku can't play because he's unregistered, apparently. I didn't realise that. So, Claude Maurice has got to come on to play this game. Sosa also apparently unregistered. Why are they unregistered? I swear they're not. Either way, we've got to deal with that. Augusto is suspended as well, which is bloody fantastic. So, Bozanovic, on you go. And then, obviously, changes need to be made. So, we'll just make some very, very quick ones. Obviously, Schneider is a little bit of a risk on his injections, but you know what, we've got to put the best team out possible and that is currently the best team. Right then, kickoff is upon us. Uh, I'm not feeling massively confident against Monaco. We've got a very good team. They've got Draxler. They've got, that's not, not Kingsley Coman, that's just someone else called Kingsley. Um, to be fair, actually, you're going to shout at me for this, but I don't actually recognise that many names in the Monaco squad. But Felipe Cruz is through early on. Can't score, though. I mean, should have done better with that shot. It looked like a terrible shot. Uh, as I was saying, I don't actually recognise that many names in the Monaco squad. I'm sure plenty of you will be screaming at me now, right now, as you usually do when I say I don't recognise player names, because everyone else seems to. I just watch Lincoln City, if I'm honest with you. Like, the only football knowledge I really massively have is Lincoln City. Other than that, it's what I pick up from my own saved. So I know the Lincoln United squad. I know the Man United squad, because I played with them, didn't I, in the, in the beta. I know, that obviously, the Grasshopper squad. Outside of that little bubble... Not much really goes in, I'm afraid, as we look to be having the better of a chances so far. Bozanovic out towards Boone. Come on, Boone. Get this in the middle. It hit the corner flag. He's saved by that. But unfortunately, it might come back to bite us. As Monaco looking to come forward. Anthony on the ball. Can't score, luckily. Their corner, though, is being put in by Golovin. Golovin. I feel like I recognise that name. Is he Russian? Well, we don't know yet because the highlight is continuing. If we score a goal at the end of this, I'll be very happy as Coley can't win the ball, but Schneider does get it back. Claude Maurice up to Coley, who's through on goal. Powerful shot, but saved by the keeper. Felipe Cruz corner into Coley. <sighs> Again, straight at the keeper from the header. Good stuff, though. Yeah, I told you he was Russian. I, d I do know someone because I, I said he was Russian. So two players then that I know from this starting lineup. Well done, Tom. I've got to say, actually, I am pretty pleased with how this is going. You know, I mean, obviously, I'd rather be winning, but we are up in the stats massively, really, when you think about it. So I can already see a 90th minute winner coming for Monaco from like one shot on target. But as we approach half-time, I think we can take confidence from this first half performance and, and tell them to, let's go assertive and say, uh, we're the underdogs? No. The media giving a lot of credit lately. That always seems to work. It riles people up, so that's quite good. Unfortunately, none of our front four attacking midfielders and strikers are playing particularly well right now as Boone has now picked up an injury. So Anastasio's got to come on for him, which is a bit of a shame. But also, Cole is not playing too well. Molnar, we've had a chat with him. Be our hero now, please, Molnar. It's still going on, though. It's still going on. Let's, let's not go more attacking just yet. Although we have got a free kick. Who's taking this? Alan. Go on, lad. Back of a net. He's hit the crossbar with that. That Or is it saved by the keeper? He's gone for a corner, so it's saved by the keeper. We're going to say show some passion out there. Come on. Another 10 minutes. Let's get a goal in the next 10 minutes by showing some passion. As Felipe Cruz puts another ball into the middle. Cleared and cleared again. So that's probably going to be that for the highlight. Please be that for the highlights. Please don't carry on. 
Illich it could have been sent off them. It isn't. And Anastasio just about gets rid of it. Come on, boys. I believe in you. All right. Let's say, let's get creative. Get creative out there. Do something clever as Cruz into Illich. Illich to do something with it. He puts it across to Anastasio. That's a good ball. Anastasio into Claude. Claude can't really do anything with it either. Come on. I don't want to go to extra time because that's when we'll fall apart. These guys are probably a bit fitter than us. They're probably, well, they're technically better. They're probably a bit fitter than us. So they can probably last a bit better in extra time as Draxler comes forward and it's a good save from Fructal. Come on, boys. 10 minutes to go. We're going to go attacking right now. Okay. We're going to go attacking. We can't say any shouts yet. But when we do, we're going to say demand more. Come on. Everyone looks focused from that feedback. Four minutes of added time. This is our chance to shine, boys. Let's not concede now. Huge tackle from Allen. Huge tackle from Allen. Come on, lad. Get it in the area. Felipe Cruz in the middle. You can do it. Stop dillying. It's cleared. Only as far as, as, as Anastasio, who just gives it back to... Oh, God, no. No, no, don't do this. Kingsley's coming forward. This is not how it's meant to be thankfully looks like then it might be go oh, it's not going to extra time yet is it because there's another highlight Bozanovic up to Claude Maurice come on do this for grasshoppers do it for all of Switzerland Anastasio's header is a terrible one it's not brilliant there although Claude Maurice wins it Molnar Alex Smith don't let us down Alex Smith come on what an absolute end to the game obviously we've got two minutes left we've had the Valencia debacle before so let's calm down let's not get too ahead of ourselves but I thought Molnar was about to blast that into the back of a net. He doesn't. He actually sets it up perfectly for Alex Smith to miss the first time. And then have a second chance. He volleyed that. Both feet off the floor volleyed it into the top corner. And as it stands, we are... Oh, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. There's a free kick for Monaco in the final minute of the game. Surely, surely not. Ben Yedder. I recognise that name. Oh, you... For God's sake... No, surely it's offside. Can it please be offside? It's going to VAR. Oh my God, okay. Oh, it didn't count. It didn't count. Get in. Grasshoppers won. Monaco nil. We've just about done it. Bastos with an offside goal with being disallowed. You love to see it. Into the quarterfinals of the Europa League we go. Well, thank you very much, Alex Smith. That was special lad as well. Congratulations. Brilliant stuff. Randy Schneider, I'm saying that all paid off. Uh, are young boys still in this? But I thought young boys were still in this. I mean, clearly not. So Frankfurt won, uh, Leon won, and Sporting won as well. Uh, let me just have a look at... I thought Grasshoppers were in this still. Yeah, Grasshoppers are still in it. We're in it. I meant young boys. Oh, I thought they won their group. They came second in their group. So obviously lost to Shakhtar Donetsk there in the first knockout round. But it doesn't matter too much because we've got further. So I'm very, very pleased with that. So we've won that. It does mean that Schneider's now out for four weeks, which actually is what it was meant to be already. So I'm kind of okay with that. Out, out for four weeks. Boone, how bad's this one? Three weeks of a fractured toe as we've been given a million pounds just about for qualification to the quarterfinals. I'm not quite sure when the... Uh, Illich given a suspension as well which isn't brilliant either uh, but I'm not quite sure when the when the the draw is it says there after the Sion game so I'm going to play the Sion game off camera we'll then go through the youth intake should it come through before the game after the Sion game and then we'll also do a draw as well deal so as you can see a 2-0 win over Sion with Anastasio and Alan getting the goals in that game unfortunately though Basel beat Servet 6-1 so that's not brilliant for us either and Servet after having such a fantastic start to the season are hanging on to their Super League survival by a thread right now. Basel also win their game in hand as well, so they are seven points clear of us now, which is, well, you hate to see it, really. I think I'm genuinely going to have to play the Toon game off camera as well, the way it's going right now. I mean, we'll have the uh, Europa League semi-final. Oh, they do this thing where they draw the semi-final and the quarterfinals at the same time. I don't like it. I'd rather we just get the quarterfinal draw, then the excitement is gone. The excitement for the semi-final is gone if they do the draw at the same time. I don't like it. So we'll do the quarterfinal draw first, obviously, where we are going to be playing against Eintracht Frankfurt. And actually, all things considered, maybe apart from CSK Moscow, that's a kind draw to us. Because we could have, we'd be battered by Inter or Sporting or Bayer Leverkusen or United. We might stand a chance against Leon Frankfurt and Moscow. So that's actually not too bad of a draw for us. And so what it means is we go into the semi-finals, potentially playing against Leverkusen or Sporting Lisbon. So... That's that's the route to the final, if we get that far. Unfortunately, 
I've got to play the Toon game off camera as well now, so it's taken a while to get to the youth intake, but we will get there. So the Toon game went pretty well. Smith, Allen and Maurice getting themselves on the score sheet then in a 3-1 victory where Basel lost 2-0 to Luzerne. Suddenly we are back to four points behind them and the race is on once again as Luzerne actually go ahead of young boys, although they've got a game in hand, but still... It's getting exciting again, maybe. Now, can we please, please get this youth and take through before the Young Boys game? Because I don't want to do another one off camera. That's just getting ridiculous. Like, if it comes after the Young Boys game, if I knew it was going to be that late, I might as well just done the Young Boys game as, here we go, finally, oh, what, what have we waited for this for? Seriously. What have we waited for? The, we've waited for this. Three and a half stars of the best player. That's it. Finish the episode there. I mean, we'll have a quick look. We'll have a quick look at... Drazen Juric, I mean, he's he's trying, bless him, he's trying, all right? I mean, bless him, he's 16 years old and bald, but has got a full face of facial hair. I mean, he's, he's, had, a, he's had a difficult upbringing, and we're making it worse for him because we're, we're slating him already. We don't actually know how good he's going to be. I mean, looking at this, terrible, but, you know, come on. Samuel Pizzini, he's a, he's a goalkeeper, not, not that we need more goalkeepers, really. We've got some good ones there already. He's got 20 determination, which is fantastic to see. It's just a shame his potential ability isn't five stars. Otherwise, I'd be very excited about that. We've got a three-star left-back as well, centre-back slash left-back, who has got very bushy eyebrows. I mean, he's okay, isn't he? He's not too... But he's got a good work rate, which is nice to see. And then uh, we've got a, a centre defensive midfielder who's also three-star, who's got a nice bit of hair, nice head of hair on him. He's got 14 decisions. That's about it, really. So not really the youth intake we wanted to see. I'm sorry that I've wasted your time with all of this. This has been a waste of time for both of us. And at this point, there's not even that long to go now until the Eintracht Frankfurt game. You've seen these two games already that were meant to be off camera. So uh, there we go. Obviously, I'll do Young Boys and Basel off camera, which are quite big. And then we'll come back for... A very, very big, to be fair, it's a big month in April, isn't it? Next episode then is, uh, we've got some big games coming up, to be fair. Young Boys, Basel, Frankfurt, St. Garland, Frankfurt, Lugano, Young Boys in the Cup. I think what we will do is we'll come back for the Basel games. So we only play Young Boys off camera right now. And then we'll do Basel, Frankfurt, Miss St. Garland, and then do Frankfurt again. Because they, they're those three, that's a top of the table clash and the quarterfinal. They are big games. So tomorrow's episode is one, probably the biggest. I mean, I say this quite a bit, don't I? But it probably is the biggest in terms of uh, prize at stake. We could go top of the table if we beat Basel and they sort of lose games in between. We could go to the semi-finals of the Europa League, which would be mental. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Please do drop a like and, of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I'll see you next time. For some more hot to the top, have a good evening. Goodbye.